Hi, I'm Jonathan Green from Teho, the place where Australians save time and money as they make the switch to renewable energy. Check out our website for more information. Up next, the top five mistakes Australians make every day when buying solar and how to avoid them. Mistake number one, not getting multiple quotes. The solar industry is no different to many other trade industries when it comes to prices. There are wide ranging prices on systems that can seem like exactly the same thing. From market research in September 2020, Teho has found prices for an average 6.6 .6 kW solar system range from $3,000 all the way up to $15,000. So what makes the solar system more expensive? There are a number of reasons why a solar system can be more expensive. Here are the three most common. The solar company is using a premium solar panel, something like Sunbow or LG. These two brands are fantastic solar panels, some of the best money can buy, but they do come at a price. Solar companies using microinverters or DC panel optimizers. These two options allow individual panel monitoring and help a solar system work more efficiently in shade. They increase the cost of a solar system due to the extra components that need to be installed and the labor associated. The solar company is overcharging. This is common in the solar industry. Solar makes so much sense financially, solar companies feel like they can get away with charging more purely for their bottom line. Generally, they will attempt to get customers to sign up on the day to ensure they don't have the opportunity to get more quotes. Now, three reasons why a solar system can be very cheap. The solar company is running on a hyper low cost model. Often in these solar business models, some and commonly all of their operations are outsourced overseas, there is little to no customer support and they have very little presence in Australia. A lot of the ads on Google and TV showing systems with a low price are these type of businesses. The solar company is using low quality materials and cutting corners where they can. In solar, within reason, you get what you pay for. Paying very little for something that seems like a lot means there are corners being cut somewhere. A portion of the cost when buying a solar system is labor. When the labor costs are cut, often the workmanship follows. The solar company is not intending to hang around for a long time and does not intend to service the installations. The solar industry is full of solar companies who start a business on a low cost model and work towards a high volume of installs. After a few years, they close the business down, leaving all liabilities behind. Teho tip, expect to pay around $1,000 per kilowatt on a good quality solar system installed in Australia in 2020. Mistake number two, getting the warranties in solar confused. In solar, there are four types of warranties. The solar panel performance warranty, the solar panel manufacturer's product warranty, the inverter warranties, and the solar company's installation warranty. The solar panel performance warranty to us is not worth the paper it's printed on. It is extremely hard to measure and nearly impossible to claim. The solar panel's manufacturer product warranty is important. This is how long the panel manufacturer will warrant the product for a manufacturing fault or defect. This normally excludes external damage such as hail or something like a tree branch falling on the panel. These types of events can generally be directed to your insurer under home and contents insurance. Solar panel manufacturers product warranties on average range from 10 to 15 years. But there are some premium manufacturers who will warrant their panels for 25 plus years, such as Sunpower, LG, Waneco, REC or Hyundai. The inverter warranty is important to understand as this is the component that is changing the DC power created by your solar panels and converting it into AC power which we use in our homes. The standard inverter warranty is five years with some manufacturers extending it to 10. The solar company's installation warranty will cover the installation of the system, the wiring, the workmanship, and other bits and pieces that the solar company did during the installation. This should include work on the roof. Teho tip. When speaking with a solar company, ask about the warranties. If a company advertises a very long warranty period of say 25 years on their panels, 
the first question you should ask, is it a product or performance warranty? Mistake number three, incorrect sizing of a solar system. Lots of new solar customers get excited by the idea of generating their own energy, increasing their autonomy, future-proofing their homes against the aggressive rise of energy costs and doing their part for the environment. We often get asked at Tejo, fill my roof with solar. While this is a great idea in theory, sometimes it's not practical. We also have customers who just want the system with the fastest payback period possible. So how do we size a solar system that will suit all parties? Well, it's not always easy, but there is a rule of thumb. If you have a look at your energy bill, you'll notice a daily average consumption in kilowatt hours. Take this figure and divide it by four, then add 30%, and that is the number we suggest you keep in the back of your mind when looking at solar. Why do we do this? On average, a solar system will generate around four times its total capacity per day. This will depend on the orientation of the roof, the state of which the solar is installed, and any other site-specific factors. However, again, this is the rule of thumb. We then suggest to increase this figure by 30% to ensure the system is meeting or exceeding your needs in all months of the year. In summer, you'll produce more, and winter, you'll produce less. For example, if you are using around 30 kilowatt hours per day, divide this figure by four, which will equal 7.5. Then add 30%, which equals 9.75. So you should consider a system around 9.75 kilowatts. This is a good start to ensure you're sizing your solar system correctly. To make sure you are sizing the system correctly, please have an energy bill or two ready when you speak with an energy expert at Tejo. Mistake number four, getting the solar rebate confused with the solar feed-in tariff. In Australia, there is a federal-based incentive to purchase solar known as STCs. On average, a 6.6 kilowatt solar system will have $3,000 to $3,800 worth of STCs taken off the total cost of the solar system, which is very generous. A solar system costing $5,000 to $7,000 for a 6.6 will already have the solar rebate taken off the total cost. Without the rebate, the system can cost upwards of $10,000. The solar feed and tariff is a credit applied to your energy bill from your energy retailer. This figure is three cents per kilowatt to 20 cents per kilowatt, depending on who the retailer is and what distribution area you are in. The solar feed and tariff is only provided for excess power the home exports from the solar system to the grid. Mistake number five thinking you cannot afford to install solar on your roof. We hear from people every day that are going to wait until they can comfortably afford solar before they make the purchase. While in theory this makes perfect sense, it's a huge mistake. If you can afford to pay your energy bill each quarter, you can generally afford solar. The cost of energy is already expensive. We have some of the highest power prices in the world. If you do not have the capital to make the upfront purchase, there are a range of solar payment options which can still make the cost of ownership very achievable. One of the largest renewable energy financiers in Australia is Plenty, who were previously known as Ratesetter. Plenty offer renewable specific low interest loans. Plenty is one of our partners at Tejo, and over the years we have seen Plenty as a true advocate of the renewable sector. Did you know? Australians finance over $37 billion of cars each year. A car, while practical to get you from A to B, is a depreciating asset with ongoing servicing costs. While solar is also a depreciating asset, it has very low to zero servicing costs and it generates revenue in the form of energy savings for your home. The cost of solar and finance each month can be similar, or in a lot of cases, cheaper than the cost of paying your energy bill each quarter making solar a cash flow positive investment. This means more money in your back pocket. On average, you should see a return on your solar investment of three to five years. Tejo tip, be careful of any 0% payment options. There's no such thing as a free lunch. 0% finance, also known as buy now, pay later, comes with a large merchant cost, which means they have factored up to 26% of the total purchase price in the cost of the system. It can still be the right option, however, make sure you know all the fees and charges before you commit. 
If you are interested in solar for your home and want to ensure you get the right installation for the right price with a reputable solar company, speak with an energy expert from Tejo today. Tejo completes an independent energy assessment of your home. We take this information out to market and return with the best offers for your home. That was the top five mistakes Australians make every day when buying solar and how to avoid them. I'm Jonathan Green from Tejo. Thanks for watching.